What up? It's Fest back at NAMM 2024 with Will from Teenage Engineering. Well, we have this KO2. I have seen a lot about it, but I have not been able to try it yet. Will, can you tell us about this crazy looking sampler? Yeah, absolutely. So this is our uh, KO2. Uh, it's a uh it's a sampler, it's a composer, I mean that's what it says on the front of the device, right? But uh, it's so much more than that. Uh, it's based off of the PO33 KO, um, and uh, you know, we took everything that we did in that and we just kind of a thousand X'd it. I mean, I know it sounds dumb and obvious, but it really is like so much more powerful. Uh, it's a, a really flexible device, uh, and uh, you know, it, it feels great to use. Obviously, it's got a great price, a great build. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this one and we're really proud of it. Um, so just looking at the device, you know, you've got your pads, there's 12 sample pads, four group pads, uh, so that's the kind of difference in color will let you know between those two. Uh, so each group holds 12 different samples, um, you can go and load those in the sound menu, you can sequence them in the main menu, you can change the tempo of the song in the, the tempo menu, you get nine projects, uh, each project holds 99 scenes, uh, a scene is what we refer to as an arrangement of patterns. So that allows you to really quickly build out the structure of a song and perform it. Um, so a lot of what we did in the KO2 in terms of its user interface and its design was to lend itself to both production and performance. You know, we really love performing with our stuff and we know people love performing with our stuff as well. Uh, so it was really important that we uh, worked super hard on that and made something that you could bring to a show, plug in and play. My eyes have always been drawn to this big fader here. Yeah, absolutely. So how does that fader work? Is it like assignable per head yeah. or? Yeah, absolutely. So the fader controls one of 12 different assignments. So those are printed above the pads. So you've got everything from you know group volume through to time stretch, pitch bend, low pass filter, high pass filter, FX send, uh, attack, release, pan, tune, which is sort of like your plus minus an octave, stepping in semitones, uh, velocity and modulation. Um, and so you can record all of those assignments. You know, they can be playing back simultaneously um, on all four groups. Uh, and those are group assignments. So if you want to change the level of the group, change the pitch bend of the group, uh, the low pass filter of the groove. It's really nice and you can perform with it and produce with it and I think it's just you know, having a fader to do all of that just feels really nice and it, you know, it feels right. What uh, are some of the more performance based effects? Because I've been seeing lots of videos where yeah. uh, it seems like the fader is used as like basically another instrument within the sample. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you can assign that fader to be tuned, for example, and then you can play about with the samples that you've got recorded in it. One that I like doing is using the time stretch because it gets really crazy at those slower rates. Uh, it uses a sort of classic algorithm to stretch it out, the sort of thing that you might get on a you know, 90s uh, MPC sample box, uh, like super stretches out the sound. And then when you get something like a breakbeat and you know you, you press a pad, run the breakbeat, and then just turn that time stretch down, it just goes and stutters right down. It's super cool. So uh, here we got some sounds on the KO2. This is just some drums. Um, of course, if you get like a break beat or a sample, it'll stretch that out. I don't have any on here at the moment, um, but we can do it with a snare drum, for example. So if I hold down fader, select time, that's your time stretch fader assignment. And then when you press a pad, you can then turn that down and it will stretch it right the way out, which almost sounds like a delay because it's so stretched uh, and because of the algorithm that we're using. Uh, and of course, you can go the other way as well. So if I turn it up, you get something super punchy. Just fly by sampling as well, right? Yeah, yeah. With, so with the built in mic? Exactly. So, you know, we didn't want to hide anything behind menus. So you'll notice that pretty much everything on the device is printed on the device. Right, so it's either one button press or one combination button press. Very few menus. So with the sample, there's a dedicated sample button. So you hit sample, it tells you this is what's available, mic. If you plug something in, you'll get the option for stereo, mono. With the mono, you can select the left channel, right channel, center channel. Um, you get 20 seconds of sample time per sample. Uh, it can hold up to 999 samples, um, which is a decent amount to start making stuff. And of course, you can back that up, put it on. We're working on a tool to do that, where you can 
save what you've created, back it up in a little file, and then upload it afterwards back onto the device. It takes a little bit of time, but then when you're you know, cycling through stuff for shows or performing with stuff, you've got that disk saved, so to speak. And that's all done through a web tool, so no need to download an application for that. Just plug it in, connect it, open Chrome, and download the files. Super nice. But with the sampling, you know, you just the pads light up, you press a pad, you can adjust the gain and the threshold, and then you just hold it down, record a sample. In this case, it will go through the mic, uh, and then let go when you're done, and it will play it back. Well, Will, thanks a lot. Absolutely. I'm Fess. This is Will with Teenage Engineering, and we're at NAMM 2024. Let's go see some more gear. Yo, we're at NAMM 2024, yo. Yo, we're at NAMM 2024, yo. Yo, we're at NAMM 2024, yo.